Did you know you have exactly the same product behind these two energy drinks? Did you know that? Well, there is a bit more salt in one than the other, but exactly the same product. Even knowing that, you are willing to pay three times more for one brand than the other. And it's totally fair. Totally fair. Yo creo que este es el recuerdo. De verdad, que yo pensaba que es así. ¿Qué marca conoces más de las dos? Repul. Si tuvieses que comprar una de las dos marcas, ¿cuál comprarías? Repul. ¿Y si te digo que cuesta tres veces más? Repul. <risa> Repul is not paying for this. Not at all. This video is not an advertisement for Repul. It's just. To be clear about it, this is not the point. <laughs> Red Bull hasn't paid me anything to make this video <laughs> loud and clear. This is not a product placement. Red Bull doesn't care about me. Let's go back to the very beginning. Why is the price of Red Bull three times the price of Fine Power? So this is not some kind of a marketing trick, making some kind of black magic to make you pay three times more for the same product. Not at all. To understand that price difference, that doesn't make any sense. Between the two products, you have to answer the fundamental quest for any marketing activity to work and to have impact. Any marketing activity. Any marketing activity you can imagine. Any. Branding, corporate design, TV campaign, performance marketing, social media, your website, um, inbound content, an image film, you name it. If you answer properly this fundamental question, you have made the first step to ensure success. How can I get more followers? How can I get more likes? How can I get more viewers? How can I lower my CPC? How can I get more leads? This is not the question. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that these questions are not necessary. They are not the fundamental question. If you work in marketing, you are bound to know this phrase. There is one phrase. There is a phrase that marketing people, marketing people, <laughs> especially all the school marketing people, I have to say, they love it. And the phrase is the market never lies. All school marketing people, they love it. The market, as it were like an abstract entity that is watching us from above and it's observing us and has the whole moral, controlling what we do and deciding our fate. It's a phrase a lot of people hate because they think, who is the market? Something I can reach. My fate is not going to be decided by someone I don't even know. We can make a workaround. We can actually use this phrase to our advantage. This phrase can actually help us. So to understand this phrase and to understand how relevant this phrase can be for us, how helpful this phrase can be for us if we turn around it, convert it in a tool, in a power tool, the first thing we have to do is to analyze the measure in which depends the success of any business. Any business, my business, your business, any brand, you know. That measure is the price. The price of a product, of a service, the price of a solution. When we look at the price and we analyze exactly what the price includes, we want to run into two main aspects. The first one is the cost. Costs are materials, all the resources you have invested, the salary of our employees, from the person that produces the product to the person that is in the front desk of the shop, the energy, the cost of uh, renting the store, everything you can imagine. If one employee is sick, 10 days, you have to pay the sick leave that are cost. If you have an insurance that are cost, I think you get the idea. So the first thing we have to do is compare the cost on Flying Power and Red Bull. And we start by doing a small research in our friend Google. And we take a look where are both drinks uh, produced. Red Bull. Red Bull produces in for Arabic. For Abeb is a federal state in Austria. It's a federal state that has like its own culture in Austria. But I'm not going to talk about politics. For Arbeck is a great place to go and to visit. Visit for Arbeck. <laughs> and now I'm going to look for flying power. Okay. At Nang Puchheim. Between Linz and Salzburg. They are both produced in Austria. If we take in consideration that the products are almost identical and they are produced in the same region, meaning the costs of producing them have to be very similar. So why does Red Bull cost three times more than Flying Power? I'm sure you are wondering why. 
Red Bull of my heart. I, again, they are not paying me for this. Really, they are not paying me for this. Red Bull of my heart. Why are you charging three times more that flying power? Well, because the price of any product, any services, you know, doesn't include only the cost. It also includes the value. Wait, 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 wait. Rodrigo, you are telling me Red Bull charges three times more that flying power just in value. So what's going on here? What do you mean with value? It's very simple. Red Bull has three times more value than flying power because Red Bull has been investing years and years in giving value to us. How? Red Bull is a sponsor of many sports events. Everything you can imagine. For example, in the biggest bullfighter arenas around the world, in Mexico or in Madrid in Spain, I'm from Spain, remember, they have been organizing for years the most popular freestyle motocross event of the world. Freestyle motocross in a bar ring. Have you seen the Planes movie from Pixar? Exactly like that, but in real life. And we go on. We go on because we have just started. Spectacular are the whole series of cliff diving. Jumps of the 8 meters high. If we think about adrenaline, we are going to think about Formula 1 and racing. And in Formula 1, Red Bull doesn't fall short. They don't have just one team. They have two teams. In soccer, in, I said soccer now, in football, the worldwide most beloved sport. Current status, four teams and growing. And we keep going. Eh? Something funnier that gives you literally wings. Remember this serie? And now, here they are, the most daredevil group of that. Urban culture, rap battle, street soccer, breakdancing. I'm an old man, I know. It's called b-boying, b-girling. We are forgetting, we are forgetting they made a man jump from the stratosphere. They said to Felix, Felix, senor, go up into the stratosphere and jump. We're not going to give you wins. We're going to give you a balloon. <laughs> and how does Red Bull organize all these events and how they profit from them? They have Red Bull Media House. Red Bull Media House owns the Austrian-German TV channel Servus TV and is in charge of distributing the content they produce. Just take a look. How many events they do yearly? Organizing, supporting, investing in, sponsoring, it has an impact in thousands and thousands of people that they make a living. And not only that, viewers, supporters, fans. I swear, Red Bull is not paying me anything. I want you to understand how Red Bull creates value. This is not the only way to give value. There are many types of value. There are many ways you can provide value. We want to take a look in detail in another video. What is indisputable is that Red Bull has been giving us value for years and years. When we pay three times more for a Red Bull than we pay for a Flying Power, there is no magic, there is no trick. We are giving back to Red Bull what Red Bull has been giving to us for many years. That simple, so easy. You give value, you get value in return. The more value you give, the more value you get in return. Let me please give you a better example. Martina's grandma is neat. That Martina. I'm going to be honest, this stock lady is not Martina's grandma. What I'm sure is that Martina will always tell you it's the best schnitzel in the world. Just as other will tell you that their grandma schnitzel is the best schnitzel in the world. In Mexico, they will say, my grandma tacos are the best tacos in the world. In Spain, my grandma croquetas were the best croquetas in the world. My grandmother panadas are the best empanadas in the world. I'm sorry to disappoint you, they are not the best in the world. They are the best for you, but for others, they are not. Why does the food of your grandma taste so good for you? Because it has an emotional value. Usually, grandmas, grandmothers and mothers, they spent years and years in your childhood giving you value without asking anything in return. That is exactly what Red Bull does. They have been giving us value so many years that we identify ourselves with the brand. We get identity value, emotional value. That what Red Bull does fantastic, exactly that. and. Really, Red Bull is not paying me anything, not yet. Exactly that is the principle of value-based marketing. What we say, help with value, lead with value, bond with value. In summary, now after all of this, do you think the price of your product or your service reflects the value you are giving to your customer, to your client? Do you know what is the value of your product? Do you know what is the value? of your service? Do you know what is the value of your brand? Do you know what makes them valuable? Well, that's it. That's the fundamental question in marketing. And that's the fundamental question for any business. Not any company have to be able to answer to be successful. What makes my product, service or brand valuable?
I know what some of you are going to say me. You're going to say, Rodrigo, well, Rodrigo, Flying Power belongs to Aldi or to Hofer, and Flying Power is also successful. Aldi in Germany is the leading chain in this con supermarket. Con surprise, surprise, Aldi and Hofer, they also base their marketing strategies in value. Flying Power is a private label. Private labels are produced by own supermarket chains and they are only sold in this supermarket. Aldi sells both Flying Power and Red Bull, and they are not only selling Red Bull, they sell it right next to Flying Power. Why do you do that? Why do you sell Red Bull next to Flying Power? Red Bull, the leading energy drink brand in the world, is supposed to be the biggest competitor you have in the market. And you put it right next to your own private label. Why do you do that? When you think in the name Flying Power, what do you think about? Let me guess, Flying Power. I remember Flying Power for something. Red Bull gives you wings. Red Bull gives you wings. Exactly. Aldi wants you to go to a supermarket and find one brand next to the other. When you go to a supermarket and you find one product next to the other, Flying Power next to Red Bull, your brain is going to do that emotional connection. And once your brain makes that emotional connection, you understand that the value of Flying Power is similar to Red Bull, but it costs three times less. And what do you think? Is this a Coca-Cola, a Coke, or is it a Aldi Cola? <laughs> this is how Aldi, Mercadona, Hoffa, and other big discount supermarket chains, they bring value to the clients by offering products that are almost identical in their rational value, and they are so similar as legally possible in their emotional value, in their identity value, but much, much cheaper. And that's why in Spain, for instance, many people say products of Mercadona, they, they are not just cheap. They, are, they have so much quality. They have an excellent quality. That feeling of having a great quality comes actually from that value-based strategy. Aldi, Hoffa, they know exactly what their clients value. And that's why they can answer the fundamental question. How can I make products that are valuable? What makes me valuable? This is extremely important because if you cannot identify your value, you cannot include your value in your price. If you cannot include your value in your price, your price depends entirely on your costs. So don't get me wrong. It's not bad to lower your cost. It's essential for any company to try to lower the cost. But one thing is to lower your cost and another thing is to be cost dependent. When your price depends completely in your cost, you have a lot of problems. You have to fight brutally to survive. You are competing globally. Cost dependency is a major issue for big companies, but it's not just important for big companies. It happens also to you if you have a small business. You have a little local store in one street in Barcelona, Sevilla, Chicago, London, Cape Town, Mexico City. You tell me, you start to price your products depending on the cost of the cost of your rental, on the cost of your hours. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. If you depend on your costs, if you are in that situation, what's going to happen is, we say always this mantra, Amazon always wins. Why is that? Not only because it's highly probable that they win you in the costs, because they have a much bigger structure and they can really lower the cost. Something much more important, they provide added value in form from convenience to the customers. When you depend on cost, you can't grow. You can move up in your market position. You cannot grow if you are a big company, but you cannot grow also if you are a small company. What makes your product, your service, your brand valuable? That question is not just fundamental to pricing, but it's also fundamental to business success and it's also fundamental to marketing. Why? Remember the very beginning of the video when we said the impact of any marketing activity relies on answering this fundamental question. Branding, corporate design, TV campaign, performance marketing, social media, your website, um, inbound content, what they all have in common. They all have the same goal, communicate value. The communication of value is only one of the main steps of the value chain of any company. The value chain that we're going to explain, surprise, surprise, in another video. If not, this video will be too long. Believe me. Well, in order to communicate value, we have first 
to identify value. And guess what is the fundamental question we have to ask ourselves? Well, what makes our product, service or brand valuable? It seems like a very simple question, but it's actually a very complicated question to answer. And it is very complicated because value is a perception. It's an internal perception when it's something that I value for myself, like a, a hobby or when I do something with my family, something private. I value some things that other people doesn't value for themselves. And it's an external perception when I'm doing for the others. If I'm giving value to others, only perception that counts, the only perception that counts is of the conquered person that is paying for my product or for my service or for my brand. That's the only perception that counts. That's the only perception that matters. And now we go back to that phrase, that phrase that the marketing people love, some of them, and that phrase that many entrepreneurs hate, the market never Lies. Let's rephrase it. Let's convert that hateful phrase in a power tool. I don't know if you don't know what the market is, but I'm sure is you should know who are your clients. First thing is you don't have to think about what the market values, that abstract entity. You have to think about what values each concrete person, each concrete client you have. Juan or Pepe or Mary or Sophie. Look there, Juan, Pepe, Mary and Sophia. And now, instead of saying the market never lies, we're going to say Juan or Pepe or Mary or Sofia, they don't value our product. They don't value our service. They don't value our brand. In the moment you do that, it changes everything. That changes everything. We don't have any more a sentence that's a wall, something abstract. Now we have a sentence really conquered and we can work with it to learn, to grow, and to start to provide services, products or brands that are valuable. The marketing that leads to the biggest success is not the manipulative marketing, it's value-based marketing. Marketing that focuses in giving value to others, in understanding the desires that have your client, the needs they have to get to them, the obstacles they face to get to them, the problems they face. Marketing can and should be full of meaning, full of impact, a positive and enriching experience for everyone involved, the customers, for the clients, but also for the marketing director, for the owner of the company, for the general manager. And now I have to ask you, is there anything more beautiful than being successful? No matter what you think about success, we know the success had a lot of faces. No matter what you think about success, is there anything more beautiful than being successful by providing, by giving value to the others, by being the most valuable to the others? For all the companies we have worked for, for all of them, for all the brands we have worked for, and there have been many in the last years, for all the people we have worked for, they will not a single one, a single company, a single brand, a single product, a single service, a single person, I would say they cannot provide value. They don't have the potential to provide value. All of them had the potential to provide a lot of value. The problem was always how can you identify that value and how can you communicate it? Please, please, please. The first question you have to do to yourself, you know it already, I have said it 20 times, but I'm going to repeat it again. Before any marketing activity, always, 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 no matter if it's a web or performance marketing or a campaign, whatever marketing activity you're willing to do, the first question should always be, how can I be what makes me valuable to others? What is the value of my product? What is the value of my services? What is the value of my brand? Always ask yourself that question before beginning any marketing activity. And now you say, okay, Rodrigo, how can I answer that question? Well, we know that value is a perception, understand a perception. So we need to know how that perception works. And that is exactly what we're going to do in the next video. We're going to understand how the perception of value works. We are going to do an accurate estimation of your value of your product, of your service by using a simple, a small ruler. With this ruler, this simple ruler, I'm following two steps. We all, every person, every company, every institution, every organization, every brand, we have all an intrinsic value. You too. You are valuable. It's all a matter of beginning the process of identifying that value and maximizing that value. That's all. Much love. Si os quiere, mucho amor. We see you in the next video.